Okay. Welcome, welcome. Just getting my PowerPoint up. Nope. So long. Can you see my, oops, we've had lots of technology issues today, so this is clearly another technology issue. So we're starting, welcome to the power of your face, 2.0. It doesn't seem to want to let me show it, but um, that's okay. We will keep going regardless of technology. Um, oop, I've lost everybody right now. There we go. And um, tons of questions have come in, so I'm absolutely delighted that you are all showing up to um, play with us today. And we do have a raffle that um, we will be sharing, offering to three people. And here's the book, The Play Formula, which is all part of um, The Power of Your Face and Radiant Aging. And I'm going to be doing a pop quiz. So whoever gets the answer um, fastest into the chat, Shelley will be managing the chat, and um, that's the person who will get um, the first book, okay? And then we'll do another pop quiz later, and then that'll be the next book. And a big clue already is that the answers are in the handout, okay? So if you have received the handout or downloaded the handout, um, that's where the answers are. But um, I'm hoping that you just remember it off the top of your head because there's some pretty good questions and they're definitely part of the learning of how to get your brain um, working with the healing process. So does anyone who's here right now have any questions since you're the priority um, that you'd like to ask us? First, about the course, about your experience, um, about how it was for you when you watched the presentation. Um, No questions? Oh, all right, then I'll go. There's to one question here. Um, okay. C is asking, will, let's see. Okay. Personally, I just, um, I just came to read the word. Uh, uh, take a look on, on the middle. <clears throat> um, one question is, will we receive the recording afterward? Absolutely. Um, as long as you're registered, you will get the recording. We'll automatically send the recording out to everybody. Definitely see. Okay. Um, and Omar, you had a question? Uh, no, I was just saying that I just went through the welcoming message. I didn't check yet uh, or watch the material yet. Okay, so you might not get one of these, but you might. You might know some of the answers. You never know. I'm trying to make it really easy. Um, okay, so why don't I get started with some of the basic questions that people have sent in, and then we'll ask um, some of the other questions that are a little bit more esoteric, like the logistical questions. Um, I know that Jonah, um, I don't know if you're going to be live today, Jonah, but Jonah has asked what the dates, um, what the schedule is of the upcoming course. And Jonah, we start next week on Wednesday, 12 o'clock Pacific time, and it is five Wednesdays. Okay, every Wednesday, 12 o'clock Pacific, two hours, and we end on August the 9th. And again, same question, will there be replays? Absolutely. Okay, so those are the live calls. The reason they're important is because when you show up face to face, that's when the neural resonance, the brain changes in response to whoever you're working with, yeah, or whether it's me holding a resonance or whether it's 
um, we'll, we'll have you in breakout rooms. So you'll be working with different buddies where you get to practice. And that resonance that you're setting up can shift your brain either for the worse or for the better. And of course, in this work, we want to teach you how to do it you know, using your face, using the um, tools that we'll be sharing with you to shift your brain for the better, your face for the better, and help other people just by who you are, which is really fun. It takes a lot of the effort out of it. Um, that's one of the questions. Um, another, you know, um, as I've answered, is that a lot of people have said, if I can't make it to the live calls, um, is there a replay? Absolutely. Um, we do, we will want or invite you, obviously you can do whatever you want, but we will invite you to, um, we will invite you to actually work with somebody um, if you can, if you have somebody, a local friend um, that you can share this with, wonderful. Um, and if not, then when we're doing our course, our classes, you can type in the chat, who would like a buddy? To practice with and then you know you can match yourselves up with that and we can help you okay and as you saw you know our team is all over the world so they'll probably be able to you know, help you as well and, and pay you up so that's where the magic is and if you've watched the presentation the magic is in the sharing and of course you can do it by yourself but the research shows very simple when you meditate for hours on your own it's not half as effective as when you connect with somebody else and meditate together. So, you know, there's all kinds of little kind of brain hacks, brain tips that we're going to be bringing in that's connected with the face and healing, a healing of deep trauma. Um, let me see. And again, Shelly or Inga or Nancy, just kind of, you know, speak up if you notice any questions or anything. Um, I'm going to look at my notes because I've got, hopefully we'll be able to get through them all. Um, so those are a couple of the logistics. Um, somebody said, you know, when will you offer this again? Um, I can't do it now um, and I'm too exhausted. Um, when will you offer it again? Um, the honest answer is I don't know if I'll be offering it live again. Um, it's the first time I've actually offered the natural facial rejuvenation level one live online. It's always just been an online distance learning home study course. And I just thought, you know, the stuff that we taught, Mary Louise and I, all those years ago, so much has been proven by brain science that why not bring it into, you know, update it and, you know, share with you why um, a lot of what we've been teaching is so effective now. So that's the fun of doing it live and then it'll become evergreen. So people can, um, you know, tap into it or enroll, but it's not going to be with the group with the one-on-one -on -one connections. Um, so let me go and see what my next question is. Um, yeah, and also I teach in a cycle. So this, this course um, is the, um, the most, the, it's like the jump start. It's the entry level course. Um, and as our team knows, I teach in a cycle and it's called the five elements of trauma healing. And those of you who are acupuncturists and Chinese medicine experts will understand this. Um, and the next element I'll be teaching September, October is the water element um, and it's called the birth dance. And this is the fire element because it's about face to face connection and about you know, clearing, as Nancy says so beautifully, clearing the pathway between your heart and your face. Once that starts to happen, then we can go into deeper aspects of like early birth trauma um, or um, in Core Light Magic, we go into ancestral and generational trauma. So I don't want anyone to go to those places until they're resourced. And this course this little course is the perfect way to teach resourcing in a way that's very spacious and also fast because it's only five, five classes. Um, oh, and, and that's here's the next question. Why is this course so short to learn about all the skills you're talking about? 
Um, well, it is a short and sweet summer special. Um, you know, there are people who want to jump in, for example. Um, I've had many people ask me and say, well, I see that you teach twin, about twin, lost twins in the womb. Um, I call it twin patterns. And I don't let them go there until they've got the foundational skills. Um, or, you know, if they have the foundational Castellino skills, then I'll let them go there because those skills are incredible. And I know a lot of you um, in the call have got those skills. Um, but so it's this course, all the full um, natural facial rejuvenation training or the Castellino foundation training are the prerequisites to go to doing the deeper work. Once you've got the foundation, then working with the deeper trauma patterns surprisingly becomes um, quite effortless. Um, but we start with the power of your face combo. Um, let me see, here's another one. What does anti-aging have to do with healing trauma, connection, bonding, and oxytocin? I'm going to ask the team if anyone would like to answer that question. Who would like to answer? Then you don't have to, for some of you, it's way too early <laughs> in the morning. Yeah, Shelley. I can answer. Um, well, it has everything to do with um, birth and bonding and um, oxytocin because we're working with the social nervous system and that first gaze and um, connection which sometimes gets interrupted in birth. A lot of us know that pattern. And so um, uh, I think that you will find that the skills that you learn will help you to assist clients or family members or friends to work through some of those um, areas where there's a, a bond that was interrupted. And or that didn't happen because some, some trauma happened at birth. And, um, you know, I can attest to that in my own birth process. And I, I fortunately studied with Ray Castellino so, quite some years ago and, um, you know, was working through that, but um, the natural facial rejuvenation, the birth dance and the twin patterns and the other things that Susan has taught us have been so resourceful and really gave me the capacity from being like an invisible little girl, you know, throughout a good portion of my life to really um, come forward and connect with people in a way that I can just be myself and relax into who I am. Um, and oxytocin and all of those healthy hormones are what are stimulated in the work that we do. So I think you'll find that it's, it's amazing work. And um, I can't say too much about it, <laughs> but I'll stop there. There's more to be said, so. Uh, well, thank you, Shelley. Yes, and, and that oxytocin, um, you know, it's, it's not just the birth hormone, of course, but it keeps you young, it boosts your immune system. Um, and there's a whole host of other things it does, um, along with other healthy chemicals that get released when you do the right steps to bring your brain into balance. And we've talked about that salience network um, before, um, those of you who've seen the presentation. Um, so, and we'll be doing more with the, with the brain network stuff and you'll see how elegant and effortless and I guess timeless although we haven't known this research until the last five years, but I found, and it's taken me the last five years to kind of be able to shift my paradigm from the training that I've had, and I've spent 40 years in body-oriented therapies, um, starting with core energetics, Reiki and therapy, and all the way through, and to shift to the fact, and this is a little, can be a little challenging, um, that the body does not keep the score. The body does not want to remember old trauma that we've all been holding. 
And when it's invited to shift into a different way of more joyful patterns, it can take a deep breath and um, start growing those networks and strengthening the thalamus. Um, and they've proven this. So, you know, in my book, one of the reasons I'm raffling it, um, I talk about we are biologically designed to be joyful. And if we hang out in those old trauma patterns too much, they become more and more real. And our brains start reflecting that, and so does our body. And our body will keep reading false signals um, that aren't true anymore, or they don't have to be true anymore. That's why this is so exciting, this research. So anyway, so I'm so glad that you're, you're here and that you're watching. Um, let me see what's next. Um, can I add one more uh, chat item? JD said, thank you for mentioning Mary Louise. Oh. I'm very aware of her presence in this circle today, as we all are. We're so grateful to both of you. Oh, we, um, I miss Mary Louise tremendously. Um, in the Radiant Aging Summit, thank you for sharing this, Shelley. In the Radiant Aging Summit last year, I shared a lot more about um, my work with Mary Louise. And this is, this is a great segue, because what we realized, this was in the early 2000s, you know, and we'd been um, studying the Dr. Porter work in the late 1990s. And um, you know, his talk about safety and his talk about social engagement that um, Mary Louise calls social vocal. Yeah. And we thought, what can we do that brings a balance where we're not so focused on trauma and we're shifting more to the joy aspect? And that's where we came up with, um, you know, the course that I developed with her in 2008, which was the natural facial rejuvenation. And um, we wanted to focus more on the joy aspects and what we would see when people got off the table, because in those days it was live, um, they were all lit up. And my husband, you know, who's a doctor of oriental medicine, he'd be doing some videoing for us and he'd say, there's all this oxytocin in the room. Oh, what is this? How does this get there? And, and um, based on the latest brain, brain science, you know, now I know yeah, what we were doing back then. So. You know, we discovered, Mary Louise and I, that we actually had a lot more fun and people shifted more easily. And we came away <laughs> feeling like rejuvenated and liberated. So thank you so much, JD, um, for, for sharing that. Um, all right. So yes, Mary Louise. Thank you, Mary Louise. Um, and, you know, that the legacy of Mary Louise, you know, the work we did together that, um, you know, has helped me keep going, because even though I was teaching the power of the face, the lazy way to looking good back in the early 90s, um, it's been really great to bring in the science and then see how the science, the brain science is actually validating more and more what we were doing. Um, so that's very exciting. All right, let me see if I can get to that next question, unless any other questions have come in yet. Um, any more questions? Oh, for some reason, my, we've definitely been having technology. I can't even access my, my sheet. That's very strange. Well, I'm just going to have to wing it. Let's ask uh, um, in the chat, did anyone practice the protocol that I shared with you in the presentation? First thing is, who remembers what the protocol was called, the daily protocol? So who is Mary Louise? Rachel said, Mary Louise is... Um, my colleague, where we first started teaching natural facial rejuvenation together in 2008, and she is a wonderful biodynamic craniosacral teacher who's been in the biodynamic craniosacral community for decades. Um, I think she and her husband, Christopher, uh, another wonderful biodynamic craniosacral teacher, they 
I think they brought Franklin Sills, um, who developed biodynamic cranial sacral teaching, um, brought him to America. And I know C um, may not be on the call anymore because of the client, but C was part of the early community where she was also a very gifted polarity teacher. Um, she's now retired. Um, so I'm on my own. And I have this wonderful team who's um, you know, working with me where we're taking it to another level. Um, so yes, so who remembers what the protocol was in the presentation that I taught you? Either if you were at the Castellino. So, so just to be clear, there were two presentations that completely coincidentally happened within two days of each other. One was an invitation from the Castellino community, which was wonderful in June, on June 8th, and the other was the Radiant Aging Summit, which was June 10th. Um, so what I did was I combined because I realized that what I'm teaching applies to early bonding. Um, no, it's Mary Louise Muller, M-U-L-L-E-R. Um, so, and also the same really important um, issues around the face and expressivity that are huge for babies and early bonding are also key for our aging process to help us age radiantly. So you're going to have, we've got like a very interesting community here today, um, part come from the biodynamic community and the Ray Castellino community, you know, and more what we call the yin, more spacious, um, backgrounds and um, others come from the more um, oriental medicine acupuncture and, and some of you have crossed over like me yeah where you've got your craniosacral background and your chinese medicine background or your yoga practice um, or both exactly rebecca you've got rebecca yes you trained didn't you train with mary louise and christopher um, as well i think yeah um, and acupuncture so so yeah, so we've got an incredible, yep, there she is. Um, we've got incredible variety and incredible skills. And what we found in our last group was that, you know, that the acupuncture and the biodynamic, they are so complementary. And when you find a way to make them work together, as I'm sure Rebecca, you know, um, it's very dynamic and it can take help, help take people to the next level. So we're using those skills in this, mini course power of your face 2.0 um, where we're taking the best of both um, based on what has been proven in neuroscience um, to another level and there are other things that have not been proven um, based on research but you know if it works for us then we keep using it but if you add these extra skills it's going to take it to another level i'm just going to ask um, Nancy or Inga or Shelley, if that has been true for them, you know, have, have these skills helped you, you know, you're still using the incredible skills and training that you already have. And I know we've got a lot of people registered for the call who are highly skilled with tons of incredible training. Um, Want to add a little bit, team? Nancy, nodding. Yes, well, uh, for sure, the it's very powerful at like the meridian points, which I didn't know because I'm uh, more on the biodynamic cranial sacral therapy. Uh, I have, my training is more with that, but I learned so much with the meridians and how powerful and deep it goes and how direct. And for me with uh, my surgery, like I talked a bit about on a other call, uh, I was numb. I couldn't feel. And this was so effective just to connect everything together, just certain points where I can just have access so easily and how, yeah, it's very easy and powerful. And also the, the warming circles, just the way that the, it's, it's a, yeah, it, I find they're very effective and easy. And I use, I can use them anytime. It's quick, it's accessible, it's, uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. So uh, I don't really, I don't know if I'm uh, if there was something else about the question that you wanted me to. Uh, <laughs> okay, no, that's perfect. Thank you, Nancy. And 
um, you know, you talk about warming circles. What's so cool for me is now that we know the science behind this and what it's doing in the brain, there are certain skills we teach you that we will emphasize because it's changing the, it's balancing the brain networks um, in a very easy, effortless way. And it's helping people um, do this at home. So it helps us take our clients or our patients um, to another level where we can empower them. And a lot of people, you know, that we've been working with, you know, practice one on one. And what I noticed during the pandemic, you know, when people aren't allowed to do one on ones or offices closed, um, I didn't miss a beat. So I want you to be able to take your skills and to be able to work on Zoom if necessary, or oh, and globally, yeah? because you are each one of you, you are so gifted and so empathic and so intuitive. And do you just want to touch one person at a time? You know, in your wonderful way? Yes, you can. And would you like to touch a whole lot more people just from the power of your face? So this is a kind of a question I'm asking you. Um, Rebecca again, can this help with neurological issues too, like autism? Great question, Rebecca. Um, these are skills that you can teach. You know, there's a lot more to do with autism and as an acupuncturist, also you're going to have the more functional medicine aspect probably as well out in terms of toxicity, etc. Um, but I've had mums work with their babies or their children. And what they're finding is um, it, uh, what we're doing is we're working with calming the brain, the excitation in the brain. And there are certain things you can do just to calm everything down. And then the immune system can kick in more easily. When we, we you know, moms are usually so stressed um, with their children who are autistic and burned out themselves. Um, you know, in some of my doctor's forums, I've, I've just seen these incredible practitioners screaming for help themselves um, because of they can't handle their children. So these are skills that we can teach to the moms and they can teach to their kids and help that ripple effect. Okay, great, great question. Um, I wish I could access my, my list of questions. Um, Here's somebody, Lisa, welcome Lisa. Um, nice to see you. Why is the protocol different from simply missed that, that disappeared again? Um, all the points in a facial massage. Um, Lisa, um, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. You wanna unmute yourself? Hi, Susan. It's so good to see you. Um, and by the way, everyone, Lisa was one of our early online grads. Yeah, so it's great to see you. Welcome back. And you're already signed up for this Empower Safe 2.0 to upgrade your skills, your incredible skills. Where are you? I'm trying to look for you. Can't find you. There you are. Okay. 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 You. You're just the same. And I'm sure people will know Lisa because we have your before and after picture in the um, NFR. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I have to say I am uh, remiss at uh, using the technique. And so I'm really happy that um, I'm having this refresher and new information come from it. But I've often wondered, even while doing the, tr the original training, why uh, uh, you know, there's there's a certain points that we that that we hold. Uh, why not? Why is that more effective or different from simply just massaging the face and including all the points as we do that? Great question, Lisa. Um, what do you find? Do you find it is more effective to massage and? The points don't make a difference. Well, I, <laughs> um, I actually, I, 
I like being able to take the whole face and and massage it um, rather than um, you know just just holding points. And as a biodynamic cranial sacral therapist, there is a lot of holding that happens. But um, I I suppose with my own self, I could tune in and and um, sense those releases going on and that movement going on just by holding the points. But a client um, that is not trained in the biodynamics, I mean, they're just going to be holding. And I know that some people get very frustrated. It's like, okay, how long do I hold? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's better for them to be doing something and spending a certain amount of time saying, okay, just spend five minutes every day or 10 minutes or whatever, and just massage your whole face, make sure you get, you know, all of this area around the face, make sure you get, you know, everything around here, you know. Yeah, um, Lisa, you're asking great questions. So it's two different things. One, what's really important and you're going to discover this in the five week program is that when you trust your intuition and see what works for you yep um and what really is pleasurable now nancy um talks about you know how the points were really are really effective for her and we have other people that love just holding the points because that's the laser aspect it's the more yang yep? Um, and for you, if this is what works, I mean, there are incredible pleasure receptors held um, through neuroscience, we know, especially in the cheeks. Uh, and there's a whole nother protocol that came in after you that we use. Um, and a big, a big deal about this work is a lot of clients um, are not comfortable with touch. Probably not the ones that come from biodynamic or massage or body work because they're coming in to be touched. But for acupuncture, it's okay to have a needle put in, but to be touched is can be scary if there's an abuse history you know, or a sexual trauma history. And what we're doing is we're teaching people. I mean, here's the bigger picture, yeah? And, and you've gone through the program, so you're going to have a whole bigger picture. We're teaching people to actually turn their giving and loving from outside to inside and to start developing that pleasure of touching and if it doesn't feel comfortable at all holding a point or whatever, um, then we teach them other things they can do to start being able to get comfortable with touch mm -hmm. okay and that ignites a whole cascade of healing chemicals in the brain that then translate down through the whole body. So if we're working as biodynamic craniosacral or acupuncturists with a lot of people in pain or you know, muscle tension or you know, organ system issues, um, as they shift into that oxytocin, healthy neurochemicals, everything changes and we've seen it happen over and over again. So what we're doing with Lisa, we're, we're kind of, you know, you've got the basic skills like in NFR level one, and then we're kind of taking a step back to, and there are all these other things happening and trust your intuition of what feels delightful for you. And when we teach our patients that and clients that, everything can change for them because then they become empowered. That makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. And then it becomes fun. Yeah. I look forward to seeing you next week. Yes. All right. Um, somebody asked, can this work influence the teeth? Great question. Dental trauma is a really big deal, isn't it? Um, I know one person, she was in um, one of our classes back in 2015, and she shared that going through dental trauma was worse than when she went through chemo. Um, so that's pretty intense. Um, I personally, um, honestly, have, I used to have constant teeth pain. And I had a major concussion, so I always had jaw pain. 
and um, you know, that then I would deal with it and it, I would help it with the points. And um, I don't get any teeth, tooth pain anymore. But you know, there are all kinds of other reasons as well. But when you've got the jaw relaxing and the muscle tension releasing, then anything you do around your teeth can make a difference. I always remember Mary Louise Muller yeah, and Christopher, whenever they'd go to the dentist, um, they'd spend time with each other doing their biodynamic, biodynamic cranial work around the teeth to help the, the tooth settle that had been worked on or one had been extracted to help the, jaw, or the, the whole jaw adjust. Um, I'm looking to see, can this work influence the teeth? The thing a lot of people wore masks for a long time. Mm. Oh. Develop mobile teeth. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, that's something I hadn't heard of. That's very interesting. Um, well, um, why don't you practice and share with us and let us know um, how it goes? Yeah, I can't see any reason why when you unlock any stress and trauma patterns in your face and help the brain come into balance or what's actually happening with the yawns and stretches that we covered in the presentation we'll do, be doing a lot more of that is it helps the um, motor cortex and the cerebral cortex start to talk much more in a more, more balanced way so that the body and the brain can readjust more easily so yeah let me know how it goes um okay so did anyone um remember what the protocol was that i taught in the presentation shelly have you seen any answers in the chat not yet i haven't Go seen it yeah there is a big need for for this yeah um i think that's really important because you know we know about the mask acne that's happened and we know about the children with the issues around masks I hadn't actually thought about teeth. So uh, thank you for bringing that up. I so, can maybe add something about the teeth. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, <clears throat> uh, yeah, uh, what I can say is this uh, approach really helped me because it's true that the face is very sensitive to, like you were saying, to learn to touch and our tissues to have conversation. Like for me, um, I learned to touch my face with tenderness and listening and deepening. And I felt more and the more and more the conversation between the tissues were uh, active, the more the tissues could soften and go deeper. And I've been really able with those uh, to, to go very, very, very deep into my story and uh, to let go of shame and trauma or things that were making my tissues very dense. And all this has brought a lot of sensitivity back into my teeth. After I had the surgery, I was numb everywhere. And all this softening and awakening and, and relationship, I would say, with the touch has gone very deep and has been going deeper and deeper, even in my whole body. Through, through my face, I can go very, very deep now. But I noticed there's been differences in my... Uh, yeah, sensitivity, I can, uh, yeah, uh, it's more subtle, it's more refined. The conversation, I would say, with my touch and my, yeah, my uh, perceptions. I don't know if that can answer about the teeth, but I know it's softening a lot around where there was shock. And it's adjusting. I feel my structure is adjusting very deeply. Mm. Mm. Wow, thank you, Nancy. And and Nancy, while I have you here, what about um, you mentioned the points? Why would that be important to you? Because you know everybody's different, so that's why we want to give people ways that they can work that works for them. You talked about the points being helpful. Yeah, because since it was so numb, and I had a, a, I had a screws and you know things, a lot of scar tissue that or difficult to access. And with the points, you can go very deep beyond. It's very uh, precise and uh, direct. And uh, how can I say certain points were very, it's like I needed this stronger contact 
you know, sometimes it's nice to be very gentle and, and uh, tender. And other times I needed this awakening that was deeper for me. More, uh, like you say, laser. Yeah, and it feels like, uh, I, yeah, it was um, com it completes, I find, the, the tender. It, it, it's, uh, it's listening. It's, it's still, still a listening touch, but it's um, more uh, yang. <laughs> and uh, I, for me, I needed it because of all the scar tissue that had been a very strong barrier to my... Uh, tissues you know the meridians and everything was difficult to access but with this I, I could contact places like in a, that way hmm. yeah I, it's maybe hard to say but yeah it's hard to to understand maybe uh, the way I'm uh, I, I had trouble expressing it in words but uh, I know um it was very effective, like you, the way you were describing where they are, it's, you know, we can feel the little ache huh, where the, the, the meridian, when, when we find the right place, it's just like the sweet spot. And then when you stay there, it's like, ah, I felt contacted and connected again inside through the meridians very deeply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Nancy. Yeah, and it has been an absolute joy to watch you. <laughs> and here you are just sharing who you are from your heart. It's like, wow, um, I'm very touched. So yes, and, um, and it reminds me, I had a, a pretty bad whiplash, gosh, in 2006. And, you know, I, I love somatic experiencing and biodynamic craniosacral. And I was doing all that um, and training in whiplash trauma healing at the same time, coincidentally. And I just kept recreating the same old stuff um, and I couldn't clear it. Um, and in the end, I went to an incredible chiropractor who knew exactly where the points were and she went right in there and I needed that laser piece as well. And I'm sure all the other stuff prepared me, but the laser was where my body went, oh, oh this is it. So this is what we want you to be able to dance with um, in this work is, is that you know, the yin and the spaciousness, which is incredibly powerful, and also, um, you know, the yang, and also um, to see what neuroscience has proven. So it, it's all of the above. Um, and um, I do see someone talking about, um, you know, massaging their son or child, um, or you can teach them to do it for themselves if they will do it. Sometimes just holding a pose when you have that bigger perspective and you're holding that perspective the vibration for them there's a lot that we can do without even touch and that's what we're going to be um, teaching you i'm going to be coaching you um, in the next five sessions um, that actually we don't actually have to touch and also you know i've, I've mentioned going global on zoom um, i don't know about you know you nancy inga shelley um, but on Zoom, sometimes people feel a lot safer if they've had a lot of trauma because they're in their own home, they're face to face, and they're able to go to really deep places because they're in charge. And again, this is what the research is showing, and this is what I've seen in my own um, practice on Zoom, um, which is extremely liberating because I love my life hands on, you know, touchy feely practice. Um, and I really miss people and I've, I've moved so I don't have my old clientele anymore. Um, but um, uh, oh, Nancy, Inga, are you working with anybody online? I know Inga, you moved from Christchurch. Are you working with people online now? Some of your touchy feely biodynamic clients? Um, I have worked with people online, you know, before that as well a bit, but really with this training in a very different way. And um, got some very, I found that in particular, the younger generation um, take really easily to, you know, connecting on Zoom and are opening up faster. You know, I had clients that would really be struggling with being touched physically. Um and they were really, you know, that that opened up another box of possibilities for them where they just, you know, could decide how far they go. And um, 
I had the chance to see one of them again um, in person when she was on holiday where I live now. And um, it was amazing, you know, how that had shifted the whole idea for her to be in, in a room with me and the trust that we had built up and touch was not an issue whatsoever anymore. It was, yeah, an incredible, beautiful, and she has changed so much and she has major trauma in her jaw and surgeries and I think it has been a really great way in for her to get in touch with that in a safe way it takes time but we all need time sometimes to process those things and yeah it's been really good <laughs> great thank you Inga and I know we're talking a lot about jaw trauma and head trauma but you know that their, their skills you're going to be learning will work with um, all kinds of trauma and um, whether it's emotional you know psychic um, or physical or all of the above um, i've now found my um my list of questions so so nobody can tell me what the protocol was so maybe i'm not going to be giving away any um, raffles today huh <laughs> um nobody remembers because in in the presentation i say okay i want you to practice for the next month and meet me at the open house and tell me how it was because the protocol i gave you you know very simple starter protocol um they've seen it's been proven to start changing the brain um improving the brain and the thalamus in eight weeks and that's to strengthen the thalamus if we spend too much in fear and trauma the thalamus goes weaker and weaker. When we start shifting and bringing the brain networks into balance, our brains get stronger and then our whole body gets stronger. And I always learned for the last 40 years it was bottom up. The research shows it's top down. So you know, that was a huge paradigm shift for me, um, maybe for you body workers, but um, it's incredibly powerful and it helps the healing um, much faster. So um, let me see. So no, no, nobody's winning one of my um, special books yet. So um, let me ask another question. Let's see if I can find it. Um, this is for the raffle. So I'll, I'll give you the name of the um, protocol. It was called the My Smiles Protocol. Anyone remember that? It was the Mindful Yawns. The slow movement, the inner listening, the explore and the share. That was the my smiles. So I'm going to suggest that we all just take a break. I feel that we've been kind of racing along and um, we do a little stretch and yawn. And again, studies have shown that this, if you do this every hour, that it is as effective as 20 minutes of meditation a day. So how cool is that just to stretch and yawn? And I had to do that to get through all the preparations with the broken links and the broken payment and all kinds of things. I had to keep Susan stretch and yawn. So let's do that. Um, let's all do it together. That's something very powerful when we do it together. Huh. It only needs to be for kind of 20, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. And notice each time you do a yawn, what happens inside you. And when you stretch, just kind of stretch into any little achy areas in your body. And really, really slow. And that gives it, the brain a chance to reorganize its connection with your body. Ah, all right. Well done. So back to my questions. Um, so the My Smiles protocol, um, that was the answer to the first question. Um, and by the way, yawning is legal. So it's a great way to bring your brain into balance and to access what we call the salience network. Um, 
And so here's another question. Um, this is for you who might um, know what Dr. Porges teaches. Um, somebody's saying, where is the protocol? The My Smiles protocol is in the presentation. Um, if you came in through the Castellino group, it will be on their page. They have the handout there and my presentation. Um, and if you came in through the Radiant Aging group, um, then you need to send me an email. Can I go to sleep now? Yes, yes. Polyvagal theory, okay. So here is the question. Um, the muscles of our face help us to be, and type in the answer in the chat. Anybody know the answer? This is Dr. Porges, the best safety cues come from our face. This is why one of the reasons the face is so important. Centrally regulated, yeah, relax and forgive, keep going, connect to these are all great. The muscles of our face, social nervous system, ventral, great, you know, you know all this stuff. Our muscles of our safe, yes, who's saying that, Dominique? Where's Dominic? Put your hand up. Do I see you? No, Dominic? Oh, man, I'm not good at this computer thing. Can uh, you hear? Do I, where, where I don't see you? Yeah, I'm here. Um, oh my, uh, participants. Can you find me now? I'm unmuted. Uh, there's one that says Deb. No, I don't, Shelley. Uh, we have another name up. For me, Dominic comes up on the second page of people on the call. Okay, Dominic. If you unmuted yourself, Dominic, you could go to the button next to it and that would start oh, your God. video. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hey, nice. I'm, an old, I'm an old friend of Mary Louise's. And I was invited to be in your first class many years ago because I lived in Ashland. Oh, so. wow, wonderful. I still can't see you. That's really weird. Um, oh, you want to see you? The okay. picture is not up, just her name. Okay, yes. so there I am. I'm in Hawaii. I'm in Hawaii, another one in Hawaii. Dominique, here you win a copy of this book. Okay, in honor of Mary Louise. So type your send um your address to Shelley in the chat. Okay. Uh, and and you can do it direct. Yeah. Um so yeah. So everything everyone else said was correct, and the muscles of your face help you to be safe. That's his direct quote. So well done, Dominic. That's number one. Okay. Thank you for carrying this work on, Susan. It's it's unbelievably powerful. Oh, well, wish we'd met you back in 2008, but glad to meet you now. And, oh, and I, I thank my team for saying, Susan, you've got to keep going. Yeah. Aloha. Aloha. Wonderful. All right. Um, and here's Anne Claire, another of our team just arrived. Um, um, so. Anne-Claire is from France. So Anne-Claire, you know, feel free if, if there's anything you want to share when I put out, out questions to the team, feel free. Anne-Claire has um, been through the whole, all, all our team has been through. I used to say in my own work with my own training, tons of four year deep trainings in trauma healing that, you know, I, I would go to hell and back. Um, I don't think I want any of my team or any of you to go to hell and back anymore. It's not no pain, no gain, it's the opposite. It's like um, together as a team, and we want to inspire you to, you know, everyone on this call, everyone listening to the replay, everyone who watched the presentation, to as a team bring heaven onto earth, yep, in a fun, playful, joyful way. So congratulations, Dominic. Um, we're gonna keep going now that I've found my questions, and I'll, I'll, I've got another, um, I've got some more questions for the raffle, which we'll do. Um, so, why is the course so short? What does it, okay. Um, some people are a little concerned about the money. Um, 
I have to be honest that this is the best value that I've ever offered, um, even way back. Um, and it's because one, we can do it online. Two, I've got my wonderful team. And three, I'm so committed to sharing these, teaching you to share these skills. Um, I know health coaching is a big deal these days because people can work online. Um, these skills will help you with any kind of coaching. They help you in your leadership. They help you in your growth. And I am so excited about them, I think, um, as is my team. Um, so, you know, what's it worth to you to have a greater peace of mind and a sense of ease with others and relationships? And how can you use this um, in your practice, in your families? Um, yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll go more into that later. Um, I found out I was getting definitely burnout in the early, late 90s, early 2000s. Um, um, and, you know, we were always focusing on people's trauma. And there's a way to do it that's completely different, that's very loving, loving very honoring, and um, very healing. So, um, Yeah, um, if I'd, I'd rather that, you know, you don't take tons of notes, um, you know, listening to me or getting yet more information, I'd rather that, you know, together we work with getting it inside you experientially, so that you can share that just from your frequency of who you are, you know, rather than a lot of explanation. And that's the joy of this work. It's about being who you are. Um, some people, I think we've covered this, are worried that they can't join the live calls. Um, and, you know, that's not a problem because of the replays. But also, you know, many people from choice prefer to go at their own pace. Um, you do have lifetime access to the program. Um, and the coaching calls are all recorded. And at the end of my presentation, I say, and this is a Dr. Porges thing, don't isolate. Now, you know, because we're taught to meditate on our own and we're taught to do lots on our own and, or we've been traumatized and we kind of shut down. Um, but the healing is in the connection. And what we're wanting to teach is the safety so that, and the safety that you can teach people, back to Dr. Borges, um, so that people can reach out and connect. And just as Inga was sharing, you know, she worked on Zoom with this person and then that person was ready to be touched. How cool is that? Because touch is so healing, as, as a lot of you know. Um, here's a question. Um, I've already done tons of training on trauma healing. Why would I do this? Let me ask the team that, because they've already, they're highly skilled. They've already done tons of training. Um, who would like to answer that? Why would you add this to yet more training? I can answer that. Um, definitely adding it is, um, I, I'm, I'll just say for myself, I started as a polarity therapist. I'm a biodynamic craniosacral therapist. I've done the pre and perinatal work. Um, I've done trauma healing work too. And what I can say is this work is so beautiful and so simple. And I even have a 90 year old man that I'm working with, with emotional trauma and actually his, his goes all the way back to birth even. And he is just drinking it up and, and finding ways to adapt his, um, whatever programs had come in from the family system and the, the, um, the dysfunction in family systems for him, you know, whether it was a marriage or his origin of um, birth. So I can say that it is simple, it is beautiful, people love it. And, and you teach them the self help tips, you know, the, the touching of their face to let them really actually in and the shoulder brushing and things like that to actually stimulate 
those healthy neurochemicals. So um, incredible, I, I can't say too much for it because it, it has simplified the work uh, as far as working with trauma. And um, your clients will appreciate it more than ever. And it's any age, you can work with little tiny babies, um, children, adults, um, elderly people, and they will understand and be able to do it and actually do some of the work in between a session. So please, you know, consider it. It is worth your while. I, I love adding it to my uh, cranial sacral therapy. And I feel like radiance comes from within. You know, we've always, beauty comes from the inside. And what better way by teaching them how to do the points or actually working with them uh, if they can't make the points, again, the other skills we'll teach you will help them to adapt and be able to do that eventually. So yeah, consider it, it's worthwhile. <laughs> Great, thank you, Shelley. So, um, and somebody has said, I think it's Judith, is it? Yeah, um, um, you know, some of us aren't allowed to touch and that's why this, system can be so valuable because you know if we are allowed to touch great you know, and, and I love my license um, and if we're not you can teach them you know, and what's what's more easy than doing it on zoom or if you're not allowed to touch in person you know because you've got a therapy practice or, then you can absolutely um, teach them how to do it in baby steps and if it's too scary for them then and there are ways that we can just help you help them titrate baby baby steps um, in a way that works. Um, I don't have one right now, but you know, just um, I used to do this in the in the 90s where I was when I was. Um, well, that's, that's, um, I'll see that. Bit. I'm back. <laughs> um, so you know, I, what I used to do is use my one of my acupuncture buckwheat pillows, and I'd have people hold their, you know, here's a little tip for you, their their baby self, you know, if they'd lost a twin or something, I'd I'd have them hold that pillow really tight, just get that sense all the way along their midline, um, and it was just kind of an instinctive thing because I could feel their system relax. But you know, even better when touching has been really dangerous or taboo you know, to get a soft you know lovely soft pillow and just feel that and stroke it and see what happens inside and you're going to be seeing the brain studies the brain research of how this helps calm the brain calms the system down where they're just hugging and hugging and hugging you know i'll have grown men hug their pillows when I'm doing sessions on Zoom, for example. Um, I even feel better doing that. Perhaps we should all do that right now. Um, so lots of ways that you can work with people. And um, somebody talked about, I think it was you, Judith, about you know, your, when, when you look at your son so full of anxiety, and, and I, you know, I totally, my heart goes out to you. And yes, that's so hard and so challenging. And what we're teaching you is how to hold that frequency inside, no matter what, no matter what, um, which is very, very hard, I know, and it's still possible. Yeah. And once that happens, then again, those ripples can flow um, across to other people across the world. So, you know, and there are more pieces, but just in saying that, you know, we, we, we want to support you, absolutely want to support you. Okay, so my page won't show up again. Uh, let's see what I can do. Maybe I come out of you. Um, I'd like to add. Um, yeah, I'm Claire. Today. Yes, welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Um, for me, this work has always been um based in the positive feelings and so it's 
is going into um and talk about the trauma grooves going into these anxious feelings going down these spirals of um intense intensities and what's for me has been the real wonderful aspect of this work is repositioning into um the well-being feelings and so coming from that place in order to um shift a perspective and developing the um developing the body's feeling of um of ease and joy and so that for me has been what makes this work so wonderful to work with because it's not spiraling down into the uncomfortableness but it's acknowledging that 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 is there but it's shifting and that's where it just feels for me as a practitioner just feels um um and for the person receiving on the other end just feels such an amazing amazing work just for and and so gentle as well and so loving um yeah and, and very very well received for myself personally but also for the clients so yeah, i just wanted to add that and 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 claire thank you and i know you know nancy has seven children and you have four young ones yep um and how has it been for you working with your kids i know judith is, is talking about her son um has it made a difference um, absolutely, and I think um, I kind of came on. Oh, we lost her. Oh. Did we lose you, Anne Claire? No, I'm here. That's got a wobbly internet, huh? We're in the wall. No, it's <laughs> my phone's really slow. No. My face will come on shortly. Um, um yeah so for me i kind of was motivated to do this course for my own creativity i was feeling blocked and just wanted to work on that but as a consequence um every shift that i felt in myself it was reflected back via my children in our relationship and my ability to become less motivated by them and also to be able to learn to hold space for them and obviously kids are um kids are like mirrors and they also amplify everything that's going on so the more that i could become calmer and less anxious in myself the more my kids would become more settled and the better the relationship and the more they were able to grow into who they are without carrying my baggage so that has been the biggest gift i guess for my children um for me doing the work on myself um and also in relationship world so yeah family my family dynamic has um certainly um been saved in a way just from me being able to work on my own self so yeah big huge thank you on that front and certainly for the kids it's it's incredible absolutely incredible yeah Oh, lovely, Anne Claire. And and actually, I will say, you know, what we're going to go into is is what um, the the key prerequisites in a way for um, somebody that's going to do well as a client or a patient or a student. And one of the key things is self motivation. And Anne Claire, at every point, you have come from that internal place where you knew when the time was right to do each piece, and then you were ready. Yep. And if you weren't ready, you weren't ready. Yep. And it was, you know, very, it's, it's been an honor to do this dance with you and, and just knowing that your timing is exquisite, as is everybody. So, and, and that you really trust that. And then you've come back and said, okay, I'm ready to do more. Yep. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad it's helping your family and your children. And um, I'm sure your neighborhood, your community, and perhaps the whole of France, huh? What we want to do is kind of link arms across the world so that we're creating this um, incredible frequency um, from inside us, our core radiance, where we're touching others from place of ease. So thank you, Anne Claire. Yeah. Um, it reminds me, I used to, I was born into um, a war in, the, um, in Asia, and then we lived in Japan after the atom bomb. Now I'm pretty old. And um, 
you know, everywhere I looked, there was just the remnants of trauma. And so my antenna were all about trauma um, everywhere. And then my little sister um, nearly died when she was two, I was four, um, was in a coma for 18 days, 19 days. Um, so I, you know, there was always this place of looking outside for safety and it was never safe. And when that shifted, um, and I wasn't digging up more trauma over and over again, you know, something very deep happened in terms of my own core radiance and um, kind of a potency building of, of wanting to share this place, what we call the jo joy grooves um, in our community. Um, somebody, I think, earlier today said, I want to learn the NFR language. Well, it's very fun, it's very simple, and it's language that you can communicate um, with your children, with your clients very easily. So thank you, Anne Claire. Um, okay. So I can maybe uh, say something with my kids too. Uh, I noticed that the more um, I'm connected with my own face and the subtleties and uh, uh, my empathy is so much more subtle. I connect so much easier with my kids too, since uh, the, I've been working, the way we connect together is very refined. And, um, you know, little things uh, I noticed uh, I, with empathy, even the, the birth trauma, you know, our face is a result of everything. It's, it's, it, everything connects to our face. This is what we present to the world. And it's so effective to work with the face because it's, everything's there. And with my kids, just, just uh, being able to see things I noticed before that are traces in their face of it can be birth trauma or anything and just just to be able to connect with it and be present with it even if I don't say a word just the, the fact that I can connect with it they receive that and our, our I find our connection has been deepening just by our faces you know and the way I can touch them in a much more adjusted way, or, you know, because it's so sensitive, but the, the way I can be, um, yeah, my, I feel my own face is more connected. And so I have more confidence also in connecting with their face. And it's easier for me to approach them. So it's all little things that, you know, they develop with time, but it, it's very uh, powerful. Mm -hmm. Great, Nancy, yeah. Um, the most important face-to-face -face connection is with our families, isn't it? You know, and if they don't feel safe around us and we don't know why because our faces are all rigid and tense or whatever, and we're anxious, then we're affecting them. So, <sighs> great, thank you, Nancy. Okay, well, um, for some reason, I still can't access my, let me see if I can try it differently. Uh, Omar is raising his hand, Susan. Omar, what would you like to share with us? Okay, uh, my mom, she was blind. <clears throat> and uh, the way we were uh, deeply connected in is when I reach home and she check my face with her fingers and hands. And she was listening to my breath you know and she was asking me what happened today something happened today to for you to you you know and I try to hide things but <laughs> she discovered that right away you know and if I am in pain or if I am anxious or afraid the moment she touched my face you know, the way she touched my face I can feel safe and in peace. Yeah. I can also sleep and go for long hours of sleep. So it was a way also, strong way, deep way to communicate with her. That's how she used to do with me. Wow. Oma, is she still alive? She just passed away six months back. Okay. Yeah. 
So Omar and everybody, just we're going to do a little exercise here, okay? So Omar, when you think, is, is this okay to do? Please. So when you think of your mom and you were that little boy or even when you were older and she's touching your face, what happens inside? And each of you think of somebody that is really special to you. Get a visual if you can, if not, get a sense. And notice what happens inside each of you right now. And Omar, what happens inside you as you think of your mom? Uh, it's uh, it's that safe space. Safe space. Yeah. Um, it's where I can relax. Uh huh. Uh, it's where I can find uh, resources, help, support. And where I can lay down my head and forget about all the concerns. So, Omar, mm -hmm. that's just each one of you. We're just kind of track checking with Omar and also with yourself. Just notice the sensations as Omar is talking about feeling safe and relaxed. And we're just going to, as I did in my presentation, savor, savor the sensation. It's like what has just happened with the brain network has come into balance. Sorry, Susan, the, your voice was distortion. Yeah, somebody needs to un somebody needs to mute. Yeah. So what happened, Oman? And we'll give you a little time to kind of check back in with your mom. Your the whole brain network has come into balance. The imagination network, yeah. the network, and the salience network. So we call that relaxed empathic rapport. Just thinking of your mom feeling safe in this moment and savoring it so that the brain network can get stronger. And each one of you doing the same with your own special person that you're connecting with. Noticing how you feel and savoring the sensations. And feel the soft touch of her fingers. Uh -huh. And first, when she starts scanning my face using her fingers gently. And the moment she do that, oh, there is someone who cares. Mm. Um, there is someone here for me. Mm. Hmm. There's someone yeah. for me. Yeah. Like my, she was my refuge. Uh huh. And where my shoulders also can relax and go down. Hmm. Release the tension mm. in my neck, in my shoulders, in all my body. So, Omar, your brain doesn't know the difference between imagination 
and reality in the present. Mm -hmm. You are being with your mother right now and your shoulders are relaxing and your neck's relaxing. And you are strengthening what we call the joy grooves, the network of joy. That refuge, safety. Just by remembering your mother touching your face. Yeah, lovingly. Yep. Yeah, well done. Yep. Even my heart beat slowed down. Oh, okay. So in this place, let's um, ask your intuition for an insight, a deep insight regarding what we're doing right now. So <clears throat> reconnecting to my safe place, to my resources again, and allowing my body to, my nervous system also to release and uh, to take a break, to rest. I even I can smell her hands, fingers. Mm. Yeah. Used to use the lavender. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's why I love the lavender. So, Omar, from this place, when you connect with the image of your mom and the touch and the smell, then your insight is that this is a place where your nervous system can relax. It's like you reconnect to your safe place. Thank you. And you did it very gently, very lovingly, and very fast on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm sharing you with all of you this too <laughs> you're sharing with all of us and so what we're going to do is we're going to and these are the kinds of exercises we're going to be doing um, it, would it be okay if we ground this and invite sure. a couple of comments yeah or, or kind of as we call them you know essence reflections in, in the birth world is that okay Yes. That way it helps the group. So anybody feel touched by um, Omar, what Omar shared from his own experience of faith? Rebecca says, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Grateful. Shelley, you'd like to read them out? So, Teresa, raise your hand. Okay, Teresa, unmute then. Um, I'd like to say that you are very fortunate to have had a mother who was so loving and nurturing. It's, it, it's, it's very, it's beautiful to, uh, to hear you talk about her and the experiences that you had. Thank you for sharing today. Thank you. Yeah. And I'll read out uh, Patty says, deeply touched and grateful. Teresa, really special. Thank you, Omar. Thank you. Um, you can you can you can smell the lavender that I'm sending to you. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Mi Michaela um said so very much is um as if no distance between our hearts. Thank you so very much. Thank you. That's so true. 
And Lisa, shall we read out Lisa? I'm trying to find it here. Um, Lisa says, session with Omar was very powerful. Thank you for sharing with this group. I felt stress leave and my system found my midline without even trying. And Nancy also said, thank you so much, Omar, for this lovely moment. Thank you for sharing this also with me. So Omar and, and each one of you, you know, as you tapped into your own special connection, just being aware how us in community, sharing off our hearts and our faces, can create ripples, not just to touch our small community here, but across the world. Uh, and we're just tapping into a little mini exercise here. But um, Omar, thank you so much. Thank you, Suzanne. I, I really get a sense of your mom uh, and, and the gifts, her gifts of touch and connection. Um, yeah. that she has. Uh, yeah. Indeed. Thank you for bringing us on together here it's mm. a, a pleasure it's, it's a, a delight for us um total delight and i also um karen from sydney one of our wonderful team has just arrived is that right karen it's very early for you what is it six in the morning um and i just am so honored at their dedication at all hours of the night and day i think we're missing one who's i in thailand um, because it really is the middle of the very middle of the night um, for her. I know it's late for Anne Claire now. So Anne Claire, you might be disappearing. So it's like we have this kind of revolving door where there's always some incredible members of our team with us. Um, and, and the whole group is always holding space. So um, let me see. Okay, I've got, um, I cannot access my list of questions anymore. I should have sent them to you, Shelley. I have, I printed them out, so I'm able to read them if you'd like. All right, well, let, let's see. Um, Lisa has a question. Is, um, well, lost it. Um, thank you, Shelia. Yeah. So those are some of the questions, and I had a whole ton above them, but um, let me see. Um, here's Lisa. What's Lisa saying? Let me see if I can. Uh, and my question is, any person can bring both feelings of joy and perhaps sadness. What feeling to tap into? What I feel like crying when tapping into a person in this intimate way. Um, and did you say something before that? Or did you say something before? Or is that the same? Um, Lisa? Um, yes. Um, Lots of ways I can answer it. Um, how to be brief, and you're going to learn this um, in, in the program. Um, what we do when these, because of course, when we're working with, you know, when we're expanding into that more joyful place, and by the way, just so you know, a tip, um, there's an incredible woman um, at Yale. Her name is Becca Levy, L-E-V-Y. Um, and she's done tremendous research on how we see aging. Um, and if we see it and we have community and we connect um, from this place of you know, social joy, social joy, we call it, um, it can add seven to eight years to our life. Huh? And there's all kinds of other things that are very wonderful and joyful that can add even more years to our life. But um, what we do, Lisa, is as we expand, yes, it's going to bring up stuff for healing that perhaps did get stuff down or buried. Um, the brain doesn't necessarily want to hold on to all that trapped stuff. So it will come up. And then we teach you how to honor the sadness or the anger or whatever it is, or the shame or all the different feelings. Um, and keep coming from the present with the brain and 
honoring the past patterns and then coming into the present and asking the brain what it really wants. Does it want to hold on to those old trauma patterns? And usually we'll discover, and we're doing it from that place of teaching each person to come from their own intuition, not from me as the practitioner or you as the therapist. Um, we're doing it from a place of what is right for you. Now, this is very new in terms of um, therapy and practice. What is it that your deepest intuition wants? You know, we asked Omar, what is it? You know, what is your insight right now? And we'll often find that once that sadness has been honored, they're off to the next thing. You know, it's like babies or pets. They're off to the next thing and the brain wants to play, hence the play formula. <laughs> Um, talking of that, I'm going to do another pop quiz to see who's going to win another um, book. So I'm just doing this from memory. Um, I came up with a whole bunch of questions. Um, and this is, I know we've got a lot of um, birth people um, here. So, and this is again from the presentation I gave. At what week in the womb does the embryo start yawning? Anybody know the answer? If you do, type it into the chat. Anybody remember that? And there's a stretch. <laughs> Who's that? Rebecca. Well done. 12 weeks. Yay, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> wow, you've, um, you were on the call, you watched the presentation or you watched the, read the handout, so well done. So yeah, 12 weeks. So um, if you remember why, you might not remember why, but what's really important, okay? Um, can I repeat the question? I couldn't hear me, oh, you couldn't hear me, Deborah. Um, at what week in the womb does the fetus, I said baby, fetus start to yawn? And this is a 2018 study, all right? And, and you know, if you decide to join us, I'm going to be showing you the studies and the recent dates. Um, Katrina, is the presentation you're referring to still available? Yes. Um, Katrina, did you come from the Castellino group? or the um, Radiant Aging Group. Oh. I'll, I'll say it. Um, so Katrina, Castellino, okay. Go onto the Castellino site um, and find my replay and the handout will be right there. Okay, um, you, you get the presentation and the handout. And who is it asked, what's the name of the book? Which book? The book that I'm raffling or the, and what other? I'm, I'm not sure which book you're asking about. Uh, my book. Oh, my book. <laughs> it's, um, uh, it is in the presentation. So take a look at the presentation too, because that will give you a lot of... Um, brain research and stuff but here it is i keep showing it very quickly i apologize it's called the play formula oh you found the meeting on facebook oh ah, okay um all right huh. I, i'm impressed because that only just went up so it's called the play formula boost your immune system in four easy steps and my husband and I wrote it in, uh, we published it, we started writing it around 2006, it took a long time, published it in 2014, because we had patients that kept coming in that were miserable. And when we said, how much fun do you have? Um, it was Susan, I don't have fun, I've got cancer, you know, or, you know, I've, I've got AIDS or whatever it was in the 90s. So, you know, they were all very serious. And the studies show that children laugh 400 yeah. times a day and adults laughed about 15. And the more we laugh and have fun and play, the more healthy neurochemicals flood our brains. 
and then our brains send these incredible signals down to the body. And so there was quite a lot of research back then. Um, sorry to flash it so fast. And um, now in the last five years, um, especially during the pandemic, actually, the research has exploded. So um, we realized that we were, um, we were ahead of the curve back then. Um, and Mary Louise and me teaching about you know, joy. So well done, Rebecca, for getting that right. Um, yeah, the website's in the chat. Um, Teresa, um, okay, um, I'll, I'll send you, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you later, okay? Um, so, Shelley, you want to read out um, a question? Uh, and, and see how we do because you've hung in for a long long time and I know we've, we're covering trying to cover as much as we can okay um, one is uh, why would clearing old trauma patterns in the face make me look and feel better wouldn't I just feel worse <laughs> team one of the team maybe someone who hasn't answered yet who would you like to answer that when you worked with clearing trauma patterns from their face, did you feel worse? Yeah, Inga. I answer it <laughs> if no one else will. Um, no, not feel worse at all. Actually, we we celebrate those things and. Um, and that's one of the things that you will learn in, in the training class is about how celebrations as no matter how big or how small actually can help you start to feel that you're kept in that joy groove and not in the trauma groove. So um, I can say that myself, I have been happier and more joyful and my playfulness has returned, you know, it kind of got stifled uh, with a, a th some things in childhood. And um, so, I, you know, this book that Susan is raffling is wonderful. And uh, the class is going to help you to stay there and to renew that part of yourself. So, yay, <laughs> celebrate and uh, enjoy life again, because I think I, I had heard someone say, uh, and I don't know who the person was that made the quote, but um, they said to remain childlike. And that's about being playful and really enjoying things in, in that innocent way that um, kind of gets stifled when we've had, you know, uh, stress out jobs or burnout or um, things that aren't going well. So, and a lot of trauma. So embrace it. It's, it's real. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. And Inga, did you want to share something or? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, you know, it really made me just often feel so light and bright. You know, it's really, yeah, it just released so much um for me and some people were commenting and and asking me what I had done <laughs> which was a really funny thing it's like oh what did you do did you have a new haircut or did you you know something is different you look different and um yeah that was really interesting because I hadn't thought it was so obvious in a way but um yeah it just brought my connection to that yeah as Shelley said so well you know about being joyful and um, yeah, it makes, I can feel it really fast now when my face starts to get um, tighter and stressed and I get stressed. It's another way of me knowing where I am and that I need to take more care of me. And I'm having a lot of fun with people and kids in my room now in my therapy sessions as well. So that feels much lighter as well. Oh, thank you, Inga. And I remember when you celebrated your birthday, 
<laughs> I hadn't been celebrating my birthday for a while and uh, that was really a cool thing to get back to celebrating myself and um, yeah yeah not being stuck in old traumas around that <laughs> exactly yeah thank you and I I know that um, you know as a child I was just way too serious there was absolutely no room for fun because there was a sense that that there was people to save even at that young age it's like you know that there was it was too dangerous and I had to be on red alert all the time and I remember when I was about 18 um it was I was we were living in Hong Kong and I laughed at something and my mom said you laughed I didn't know I wasn't laughing um, you laughed I don't know what it was but it was probably after Dr Wong walked worked with me um, and someone mentioned vision um yes I do want to brag a bit um this new community um nobody knows me um and when we all people talk about their age here I don't know why and so when I say well I'm nearly 70 very proudly and they will look at me in shock and horror <laughs> so I'm like bragging now and the glasses I wear are you know in my teens um, when Dr. Wong worked with me and I talked about concussions and forceps and all the birth trauma stuff yeah um, and I couldn't see um, and when I went to college uh, early um, I couldn't see the, the blackboard in those days because my eyes were so skewy and blurred and these what I'm wearing is um, drugstore glasses um, the lowest of the low and I use them for reading I just wear them out of habit but um, so you're absolutely right um, as your brain chemicals improve and your brain improves um, and flushes out there's all kinds of things you can do to just flush out the garbage in your brain um, your eyes are part of your brain so I guess I'm walking living proof um, we yes. have Shall there's you? one more question in the chat if you'd yeah. like to hear that now yep Katrina says I study brain gym in the 80s and there seems to be some parallels especially with yawning do you want to interrupt that uh, um Katrina yes I think Mary Louise did brain gym too um the yawning has now been proven okay back then they didn't have the fMRI studies and they do now and I think there's at least 70 studies maybe 100 studies on all the different benefits of yawning and how it's the fastest way to bring the brain network theory into balance so Katrina yes a lot of us were doing things intuitively or teaching stuff that we thought were working oh what was that oh check, 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 check the last bit of glasses um, so yes um, what we can now do is go this is this is really effective because it's been proven and the results are pretty dramatic and this we can continue but why would we want to if we know that these results are much more dramatic and more effective yeah and a lot of the research was done with buddhist monks and nuns franciscan nuns so that franciscan nuns wanted to be closer to god and the buddhist nuns wanted to go into super consciousness and enlightenment and the same changes were happening in their brains and now um, we can use these skills you know we don't have to meditate for decades or, or pray for, for decades um, we can do it practicing these skills you know briefly for every hour pretty it's very exciting uh, Katrina yeah great yawning helps them in the evening and it helps us wake up our brains in the morning so um Shelley any other key questions because you know we've been on for a long time and I want to let people go at two specific um okay anything what is, um, what's the difference between NFR the natural facial rejuvenation level one blueprint and the power of your face point 2.0 combo okay yeah and some of you have already done nfr level one you know like lisa um who's done nfr level one and two um the difference is and and that's yeah thanks for reading out that question um 
The NFR Level 1, part of the reason that I've included that is because it offers 18 CE hours for body workers or 18 CEUs for acupuncturists. So that gives you an instant bonus right there. So this is a gift we're offering. Um, and I'm, it's a lot of work to get CEUs set up and it's really super expensive for those that it's relevant to. Um, so I'm not going to do that for the power of your face. So you get your 18 CEUs automatically. Um, what we do with the blueprint is you get that you know, as our gift and there'll be some of Mary Louise in there, which is lovely. Um, you go through the basics of that and we will be using each lesson in the live call. And I'll be saying, you know, this is what is proven by neuroscience. We're going to continue with this. We'll be doing um, live practice sessions and you're going to be experiencing um, it directly, you know, face to face. Or if you're doing it, watching the re replay, you know, if you find a buddy to do it, it with, that's really great. Um, and so we'll be going through using the level one blueprint as a structure. If you've already done it, that's fantastic because you've done it. You don't have to worry about it. Um, it's going to be a little bit more work for people coming in who are new, but it's still super easy. And we'll be leapfrogging off those skills into the brain science. And with the brain science, I'm going to be showing you the studies and then we're going to be practicing. And with Omar, thank you. We did a little mini piece there of what we can do with the brain science um, that's been proven. You know, it's not just a lovely touchy-feely exercise, you know, where Omar and his mom lit us up. It's actually, it's been proven and the brain starts changing and those dendrites and, and the networks get stronger um, into more of a healing mode than an anxiety-ridden, immune, decre depleting mode. How that makes sense. Thank you, Shelley. Yeah, does that make sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. Got the difference? That's why I'm combining them to make it super efficient. Any other questions? Well, oh, I'm all muted. Uh, another question might be uh, a good one is how the beauty industry is misleading women with massive myths that turn women against themselves and cause more trauma. Yeah, Any, anyone on our team want to answer that? Or maybe, you know what I'll, I'll do, I'll jump in because it's a huge topic. Um, um, fitness, uh, youth culture, <laughs> oh, filters. Oh, Rebecca, yes, absolutely. It's scary what our young are going into. And so it's not just the beauty industry. Well, it is. And in Korea, it's the norm for young people when they graduate to get a facelift. So the culture is all about outside and it's making the beauty industry, aka big pharma, millions, billions. It's a huge industry. Um, and really, when I did the presentation, I used it as a metaphor for ways that we're being manipulated. And this is a little bit being a little bit political here um, that we're being manipulated at many different levels but it's very very crafty and we don't think we're not aware of it like you know it was my friend Ellen who told me I needed to get my face done um, I didn't think it was the beauty industry but now I see it was you know it was all these different manipulations that women feel that they have to do and I've had incredibly wonderful um, people, I think Sandra actually Castellino from the Castellino group said, Susan, our community, you know, we're not, we're not into, you know, face stuff, but, um, you know, I've had wonderful, very sensitive, intuitive, spiritual people come to me who have secretly, um, had work done because they felt, um, manipulated. They didn't know they were being manipulated, but, you know, they always had good reasons. And, you know, Rebecca as an acupuncturist, you'll know. We know what happens when it cuts the meridians. We know what happens when Botox, which is highly toxic, goes in, or people have implants, breast implants, or you know, guys now having implants, all kinds of things, and Botox. So it affects guys too. And um, you know, the more men we have, thank you, Omar, um, joining us, the better, because we can help 
people at many different levels. So, yeah, when we wake up, and I've, I've, as I said in my presentation, you know, when you see it, you're aware of it everywhere, the manipulation, and, and the more clear we get with our own core radiance, the less we can get manipulated. Yeah. Anything else, Shelley? That's, uh, I'm just watching the clock. What makes this so different from anything else available? Uh, and um, well, Rebecca's answer that alone is reason to take your course. Oh, oh thank you, Rebecca. Well, I hope there's many more reasons um, to take our course that's, um, you know, about uplifting the world. Um, Shelley, read that out again, because I was so focused on what Rebecca was saying, very touched. Yep. Um, what makes this so different from anything else available? Yeah, um, I will actually hand that over to my team because I'm biased, <laughs> which is why I created this next step because I saw that a lot of our incredible, you know, trainings and teachers are missing this new piece. They're teaching old stuff, which we thought worked, but with the research, it doesn't work as well as adding these new pieces, which will then elevate your practices to a whole nother level. That's what my excitement is. And this is why, you know, as Omar was saying with, you know, his face and his mom, your face has the power, you know, to light people up or shut people down. Yeah. And it's your choice. What would you like to do? It's your decision. Yeah. And whatever choice you make, we completely respect. And if you want to light people up, come and join us. So that's what I think makes it unique um, and special. And it's such a super short summer special. Um, as I say, it's the shortest, briefest, most impactful um, little course that I've ever offered. Um, let's hand that to the team. What makes this work? Why, why are any of you hanging out with me for so long and doing your own incredible work. Why are you here today? I'd like to, to reply, jump in straight away. Um, for me, the work is so gentle and lighthearted and yet so deep. And, and it's so simple and it's easy to take it on a very simple level to think, oh, that's, that's, you know, that's too simple. But actually, I think that's the beauty is it's so effective in its simplicity and so profound. Um, for me, it's just, and I integrate it easily. I've seemed to understand it. For me, the way Susan, you talk, it feels to me that's the language that my, that my body already understands. And so it's easy, to, it sticks. And when I share the material with my clients, um, it's, it seems to just stick and go so deep so quickly. And I think that's um, what's amazing. That's why I'm still here because <laughs> it doesn't seem to get older. <laughs> and there's always new pieces. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I'm totally honored, Anne Claire. And thank you for really getting it because you do get it and you do share it, which is what my goal is for each of you is to spread your own ripples and touch your own communities. And the big deal is to do it in your own way. You know, you're not doing being a clone of Susan, you, you might, my words might land in you, but you're doing it in your own Anne Claire way. Yeah, which is incredible. All right. Thank you. And Claire, she summarized everything. I can't say anything else. <laughs> yeah, she gets it. Yeah. All right. Anyone else before we close? We've got a couple more minutes. Anyone on the team want to share? I'll just, I'll just say a short thing about how much I love being lit up and um, allowing my heart to shine right through my face and the excitement. You know, you talked about excitement, Susan, the excitement of all of that. 
you know, the playfulness, the, the joy, and really, really having that be your place of being. And so I, I feel that, um, you know, it really touches me deeply and I see what it does for my clients. Um, it's a gift that we can give not just to ourselves, but to others. And um, I did actually gift the um, session to a friend who had just finished cancer treatment and, and um, is cancer free after nine months. And um, she went so very deep, it was so healing. And um, she said, oh my gosh, I felt like I was in the ocean, the vastness of the ocean in the deep, deepest, stillest place. And my essence emerged. And I, you know, when I, I listened to her, I thought, yes, that's what we're doing here. We're allowing people to go to the deepest part of themselves, their core, and let that essence shine through. So thank you for the gifts because it really is a gift to all of us. And we can share this with the world. They need us right now, especially everyone needs this. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Thank you, thank you Shelley. Yeah. And um, for those of you who've got the biodynamic background and Lisa just asked a question, you know, maybe you can um, talk to Lisa separately. And Lisa is part of a training already, um, Shelley. So, and Lisa, you can ask Shelley and we'll talk about it in the course. But um, uh, Shelley on Zoom, it's, it's okay to talk about this, isn't it? Because we've got it recorded. Um, went into, as she melted away the early patterns, um, went into what we know in biodynamic craniosacral work that place of ignition, yeah, where we light up and it's, it's from the embryological place, very, very deep. Yes. <laughs> and we expect that on a regular basis when we give ourselves permission to be joyful. You know, not like I was as a little girl where I thought I had to carry the suffering of the world. When we say that's not going to help the world, but when we give ourselves to be permission to be joyful and come from our hearts and melt that old trauma, there's a natural ignition that can happen on a daily basis. <laughs> so yeah, Shelley, yeah. And, and that ignition, Shelley, you kept saying, how can I teach this? Huh? And you called me for huh? So, So it becomes a win-win. And I want all of you who, or I invite you, um, those of you who are on the call today and will be watching the presentation, that what we're looking for is leaders. We need leaders who come from a place of joy, um, come from their hearts. And if you, any of you remember from the presentation, especially the Castellino presentation, I shared about you know, the Soviet embassy um, diplomat who said, Susan, you are the saddest person I've ever met. And that kind of sent me reeling but my longing back then, my longing was to work with these diplomats. And we had people, you know, prime ministers and Amnesty International and the Soviet embassy and different writers and astronauts and all kinds of people meeting. And my longing was, how can I get, how can I, <laughs> the me, our community help these people, these leaders connect from their hearts? Wouldn't the world be a completely different place? And I only remembered that longing recently as I was working on the presentation. And um, with these skills and the latest brain, brain scan research, we have the tools and the skills to do that. So we invite you to join us. You go to, you know, wherever you came from, whether it's the Castellino group or the Radiant Aging group, you'll see the special promo. It's a 70% savings which I never offer. Um, and you know, it's only we start on Wednesday. So the savings last till um, Tuesday night. Okay. So yeah, any anyone of our team want to share finish before we close? Anyone else have anything? Uh, I'll share something. Aaron, yes, yeah, love to hear from you. 
Um, <clears throat> well, I noticed um, a couple of people mentioned um, about the, you know, maybe difficult feeling that they might have, you know, honoring the sadness compared to the joy and um, <clears throat> dealing with all of that and how we, um, you know, we honor the past, um, but moving um, into the present, you know, so we bring that joy in. Um, I guess I wanted to say that not only, you know, working with the face has like melted um, trauma, um, is that you have given us many tools um, to help deal with anything that has been uncomfortable. So any feelings that, you know, so I think, um, you know, that's Im important too, that it makes it um, so much easier to deal with anything that is uncomfortable coming up because we have the tools, um, you know, not only the support of one another, you know, you've given us so many tools that um, not only help us, you know, during the course, but if we need at any time in our lives and also to use um, with our clients also, which, um, yeah, I think is, um, is huge. Mm. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, yeah, great. And I'm thrilled the way you're helping Sydney, huh? <laughs> You're helping Sydney. Great. All right. So remember, everyone, that the special ends um, Tuesday night. Um, type in the chat if you're brand new and came off Facebook today um, how you want us to contact you um, and send you links. And just remember that your face does have the power to change the world. Yep. Whether we light people up or shut them down, and we may not even know that we're doing it as I said in the presentation. So, you know, you have a decision to make. Do you want to join us in a joyful way and join this community? Um, if you're worried about finding buddies um, or practicing, um, our incredible team is really good at pairing people up, um, finding new people so that you don't have to do this alone. And if you want to do it alone, of course, you're free to do that, okay? So you remember, you have the power to light people up or shut people down and to share those ripples, whether you light them up or shut them down across the world. And together, as you see, this is a global community. Um, we can do this in a really joyful way and not from that place that I as a child felt so burdened, which is why I'm so excited now. I'm so excited because we have the tools, as Karen said, we have the tools and we have the power. All right, Rebecca, light it up. Okay, everybody, um, I think we're done. I don't think any more questions have come in. Um, luckily for you, I've lost my whole list of questions. And, um, oh, I have one more book. See if anyone has the answer. The question is, how many pain centers are calmed down in the brain by yawning? Anybody have the answer? That's our last one. Last book. Going, going. Anybody? Oh, Rebecca says five to twelve. Rebecca, you've already won. <laughs> you've already won. Um, Susan. Yes. <laughs> if I tell you a joke. <laughs> Can I get your book? <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we vote on that joke? Um, let's see. What do you? What's your joke? <laughs> okay, you know, in in my country, when a couple get divorced, so <laughs> wait, wait, the moment wait. they. Oh my! Is this Tunisia or Dubai? No, in Tunisia. Tunisia. Okay. So when they get divorced, when the, when the divorce is announced, 
So they keep uh, a period of time of three months as a chance, maybe they get back to each other, right? <clears throat> so one day, one couple, they get divorced. And after two weeks, the, uh, the father-in-law of the wife, he passed away and the wife, she inherited a wealth, you know, she became a millionaire. So the husband, he called her, hey, I'm pregnant, come back. <laughs> <laughs> you, usually it's the opposite <laughs> usually the opposite that's a great joke from Tunisia <laughs> I love it I love it yeah and and that is really good we met that we love men we welcome men um in in our courses so um, if you keep telling jokes like this you're very welcome to join us let me see thank you that. um if somebody has come up with the right answer, because um, <laughs> I think it's quite expensive to send a book all the way to Dubai or Tunisia, yeah? Um, you might not want to pay the shipping. Let me see. Um, I already got a book. Yeah, that's the, exactly Rebecca. Um, so <laughs> Katrina says all the pain centers. There are 12 pain centers in the brain and five of them are deactivated or, or calmed down by yawning. So, you know, when you know this, and, and actually 12 of them, are all 12 are calmed down by yawning and those super slow micro movement stretches. So, um, yeah, so I don't, so, so Rebecca said five to 12, so you were close, Rebecca. Um, now we've got um, Deborah, okay. Um, so, um, and Katrina, I see you, you must be in England. <laughs> yes, and, and that's where I was in London, working in London, so I understand what's going on in England at the moment. Um, so, one new message, um, since nobody got that last one, um, where can you order my book? Oh, Isabel. Um, you live in Germany um, um, on Amazon, the play formula on Amazon. And Omar, if you want to pay the shipping, I mean, I'm happy to pay the shipping in um, America, but if you're happy, if you want to pay the shipping, it's probably cheaper for you to buy it in um, Dubai. But if not, I'll send it to you, okay? <laughs> right. I, I will check the shipping. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm happy to send it to you. Um, yeah. In fact, you know, you. put your address in the chat. Um, and Rebecca, sure. you've got you're putting your address your address to Shelley in direct message, um, and also the other one. Who was the other one who won? Was it Katrina? Who, who wrote safety? Shelley, you've got it. We'll find it. All right. Well, everybody, remember you have some thinking to do. There's a gap. Um, book isn't on Audible yet. Um, one day it might be, or actually it'll be updated because of all the new brain science, it'll be updated. Um, so remember, you have a choice through your face, yep, to light up the world or to shut it down. And come and join us to reduce that gap. Okay. All right, everybody. So we'll be sending you the replay. And really delighted. It was a lot of fun hanging out with you. And thank you so much, team. And look forward to seeing you, some of you, um, next Wednesday. All right. Take care. Bye. Thank you.